Hey, how you doing? Hey, ma'am, how you doing? Hey, sis, how you doing? You good? Can I ask you a quick question? Real quick question. I know you're on the move. Are you, are you celebrating uh, 4th of July? Can I ask you why? Can I, can I, do you know about what 4th of July is? What is the celebration of 4th of July? Independence Day for who? For all Americans? So what, all right, so look, can I show you something real quick? Do you have five minutes? All right, so look, when you read, give me Colossians 2 and 8 real quick. So look, July 4th was established in 1776. We did not become, we were still in captivity at that time. So why are we celebrating our oppressors independence? You said what? We were still in the cotton fields, so, mama. Because we was in the cotton field. We was doing whatever the, the slave master did. That's what we was doing, right? Are we still in the cotton field today? Then why are we celebrating this holiday still? So look, let me show you something real quick. I'm going to let you go. Go ahead. Look at Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of man. See, 4th of July is a tradition of man. And what man specifically? Our oppressor's tradition. So it's a slap in the face. You know how we protest for Black Lives Matter? We see our people getting gunned down in the street by the, by the police and all these different type of police brutalities, incarceration and all those type of things. It's because we are, we are cursed according to the Bible. The Most High said we curse. So look, do not celebrate that holiday. That is not your independence. We gonna have an independence. When the Most High is going to come back and save us from our oppression. So look, it's a slap in the face for us to celebrate our oppressor's independence. But we don't have our own independence. So that's all I want to share. But remember, you're an Israelite according to the Bible too, okay? Learn about the Israelites. Learn about the holidays in the Bible. which talks about your independence on how you overcame your oppressors. And how you had your own holidays and memorials. See, July 4th is not, nothing but a memorial for the so-called white men. But you have your own holidays too. So That's read right. about that. Read about Simon. Read about uh, the Maccabees, the Feast of Dedication. Read Leviticus chapter 23. Those are your holidays you uphold and keep, okay? Come on. So look, you're an Israelite. So go ahead, finish that off. This one, this Read. one too. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Right, right after Christ. See, this is not after Christ. See, Christ is, look, the Most High is not happy that we celebrated our own oppressors independence. And I know you want to have a good time. And I know you want to have a celebration. And you want to pop fireworks. But where were you on July 4th? How you doing, sis? You good? Sis, can I talk to you? I see you at the back, but I know you busy. But look, quick question, are you celebrating July 4th? Are you celebrating that holiday? I'm just trying to talk to you. You don't have to, you can, you can acknowledge me. I'm not gonna do <laughs> nothing to you. <laughs> you know, we out here for our people, we gotta learn how to communicate. We gotta learn how to have these discussions. If we don't, if we gonna sit here and, and, and reject even acknowledging our people, then how are we supposed to get out of oppression together, right? We celebrate Black Lives Matter, we celebrate unity, but then we don't show it within our day-to-day -day lives, right? <laughs> That's the same thing, give me that James 1 and 8. Go ahead. James chapter 1 verse 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. See, that's what the Bible says. It says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. See, our people, we unstable. We double-minded with our thinking. We double-minded. How you doing, mama? You good? How you feeling? Look, so you know what we talking about? We talk about July 4th. How you feel about July 4th? Because I had a birthday. Say what? I had a birthday. Say you just had a birthday? How you feel how you feel about uh, July 4th? Uh, the fireworks. So I know that the fireworks look appealing to the eye and it looks nice to see, right? But look, just remember that July 4th is not your independence. July 4th is not your celebration. When July 4th was was, was established, you was a slave. And right now we still in mental uh, captivity. We're not physically slaves. But we still in slavery. We in captivity. We being oppressed. So don't celebrate your oppressor's uh, freedom or independence. Give me that James one and eight again. 
A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of the man. See, the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So you know how the so-called black man becomes a, a, a double-minded man? What's up, King? How you feeling? Good? Now, you know you're an Israelite according to the Bible? Look, that's, that's your nationality. That's your mom right there? No, I'm a grandma. That's your grandma? Oh, I can't give you the mic, though. No. But we, we can talk, though. Sing. Oh, you want to sing? You know what else you can do that's better than even singing and rap? Man, you can rule the earth. That's what you can do. That's right. I, don't know how. I can teach you how. That's what he's going to do. And that's what we going to learn. He's a king. Everybody out. And he a king. Give me Deuteronomy 76 real quick. But he a king and, 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 and everybody out. Right. But you know what's more important? This scripture right here. Go ahead and get it. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. See, the Most High God says that the so-called black man, the so-called black man is actually the holy people of the Most High God. Most the definitely. chosen people. And guess what, what it said in that last part? Read that above part. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. No, I said equal rights. We're supposed to be above, not equal, not below, but above. We gonna be. We gonna be exactly. It ain't no if stands but when you right. all said done. Right. We gonna rule the world. Period. So how now? Now we need we need a direction on how we gonna rule the world. You know how we gonna rule the world? I'm trying to get it right, yo. <laughs> That's all good. And hey, you gotta get your, make sure you get yourself right too. So look, we're going to rule the world by following the laws of God. So look, you know how we was kings and queens, right? Yeah. You know we had a law. You can't be a king and have no order. You know what law we had? We had, in the Bible, it has over 600 laws that we had to establish the earth. So we had over 600, this uh, over 600 laws in the Bible, commandments that we're supposed to keep and uphold. And if you keep all those things, it says that you're going to be uh, successful. It says you're going to be successful. So give me that uh, Joshua 1 and 8. Huh? In the afterlife. So what? In the afterlife. In the afterlife. No, we can get it now. If you start obeying, give me that Joshua 1 and 8. Go ahead. I got it for you. Okay. Book of Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. So this is not a book of religion. This is a book of law. It's a law book. Go ahead. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe and do according to all that is written therein. So everything that is written in here, we must do and uphold. No ifs, ands, or buts. Go ahead. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. So look, he said, if you do those things, he says, and then... He's going to make your way prosperous. And then you're going to have good success. So that is the only way we're going to uphold it now. We can do it now. We It's, it's possible to do it now. We can overcome all things. What's the, hold on, King. We can do all things, right? So what we have to do is we have to learn how to listen to what God says, though, okay? You listen to what the Father says. Don't let your friends tell you otherwise. Go ahead. Are right, you good? So remember, you're an Israelite according to the scriptures. All right, King. <laughs> All right, King. <laughs> hey, you're an Israelite and you're a God too. Oh, that's the bus station. What's that? All right, King. <laughs> hey, see that? I mean, little stuff like that is going to make them grow up like, okay, I'm a king. I'm going to say that. All right, King. I'm different, man. It's power in words. It's power in words. You still talking? You got that um, Psalms? Go ahead. Psalms. 82 and verse 6, I have said, you are gods, and all of you are children of the most high, but ye shall die like men. See, the Bible says that ye are gods. What is a god? It's a power. See, you have a most high God, but then you are his children, so you become a god yourself. But, he says you're going to die like men. Why? It's because we don't live, listen to the ordinance of what a god's supposed to do. See, you're supposed to have dominion over the earth and have the ability to, to control the earth. That's what you are. So get back to it. Go ahead. I'll read, uh, go, up, go up a little bit. Read that verse 2. How long will you judge on unjustly? See, the Most High says, how long are you going to judge unjustly? That's not what a God does. 
But God does not judge unjustly. He has order. He has balance. Go ahead. And accept the persons of the wicked. And how are we going to continue accepting the persons of the wicked? Why are we accepting the fact that we, we going to celebrate the so-called white man's independence? Why are we okay with accepting these things? It's because, look, you're not in your God form. You're not acting as what a God is supposed to do. Go ahead. Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. See, our people is afflicted and needy right now. What are we in need of? We in need of salvation. Give me Matthew 121. You can hold that. We in need of salvation. So guess what? That was the reason why Christ came is because he saw these things coming on the earth. This is prophecy. See, it was prophesied that you're going to be taking those slave ships all the way to a land that you do not know not. A land and a language that you do not understand. A people that you do not understand. That's what you are. You are Israelite according to the Bible. That's your true history. So the Jewish people over there in, in, in West LA, that's not their history. That's your culture. You're not a so-called black man. You're not a so-called black woman. You have a nationality. You have a language. You have a dietary law. You have a culture. You have a dress code. And I know y'all don't like to hear it. It may make them feel weird. They be cringing up a little bit. Because somebody telling you that you better than being nothing. That's why it is. Go ahead. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. There, I mean, they know not. See, but the Bible says that the so-called black and Latino man don't, doesn't know. They know not. Why? Go ahead. Neither will they understand. See, we don't understand. You don't understand the concept of me calling you a god in a way. You don't understand of me saying that you're the, the most high chosen people. You don't understand those things. Why? Go ahead. They walk on in darkness. It's because we walk in darkness. We walk in ways that's contrary to what the scripture says. Go ahead. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. See, the most high says the foundations of the earth is out of course. It's out of course. That means the way that this world is living is not the way it's supposed to be done. So we got to realign these things and get things back to order. Go ahead and give me um, Proverbs chapter 26, verse 25. You got your pocket book? Yeah, you got your pocket book. You get Sirach 10, verse 12. Then you give me Proverbs. See, we take on these traditions of our own oppressor and feel like it's cool. No, that's not. Go ahead. How you doing, sis? You good? Can I ask you a quick question? Real quick, I know you, you waiting for the light now. Are you waiting for, um, are you celebrating July 4th? How you feel about it? Uh, no. Y'all celebrating? All praise be to the most high. Why are you not celebrating? Um, I got other stuff to do. <laughs> stuff to do. So look, I'm going to give you a better reason on why you shouldn't celebrate uh, July 4th because next year you might have uh, free time to celebrate it. Go back to that um, Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. So look, in plain terms, July 4th, what is July 4th? It's the independence of what? Uh, independence of America, right? So look, in 1776, that's when it was established. What was the so-called black people, black and Latinos doing in, 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 in July 4th, 1776? You said what? So why I can't hear you. She said we we were slaves. Said so we were slaves, right? So turn, other, turn, it, turn it on the other side. Bring it here, bring we here. We was on the cotton fields. No, we was on the cotton fields. We was picking cotton for the so-called white men, right? They was raping, raping our women. They was they was killing the uh, they were selling our children. We were spread out through different cotton fields, right? So what do we look like? In July 4th, 1776, this is what we was doing, right? While the so-called white man was celebrating his independence. So now, what, over 400 or 300 and something years later, now we celebrated the so-called white man. While we was in this condition, we celebrated his appendix. Why are we celebrating his appendix and not our own appendix? The reason why, look, so now I'm going to show you something real quick. Now we fast forward. While we people say, oh look, we was oppressed at that time. Now we free. These are things that happen that, that always goes on. We got so many lynchings, they still trying to pass an anti-lynching law, but they haven't passed it. Why? Because they don't care about it. You got police brutality, 
We know that for a fact. That happens all the time with police brutality. And then we wear uh, shirts, uh, Eric Garner, all these different type of people that's getting killed, right? And then we say Black Lives Matter. We reposted it on social media. But then we celebrated a nation's independence that does not care about us. And on, this, on July 4th, then we happy to be Americans. We wearing the American colors. We wearing the flag. We repping the flag. <laughs> Why are we doing these things and being contrary to what we protest about? So that's the reason why I'm giving this to you is because this is a better reason why you should not celebrate July 4th. That's you right. Your own independence. You're gonna have the independence, but when you have your independence is when you're gonna rise up out of a, a, a oppression that that's the Most right. High is gonna deliver us from. So that's why the Bible it, it questions on who's gonna rise up. So that's why you don't celebrate July 4th. And also, you're an Israelite according to the Bible. That's your nationality. You're not a, a, a black woman. African American woman. Those are by words that they put on you. Black, that's the color. My pants is black. Am I black? Why we call ourselves this color then? African American, so we say we're from Africa, we're in Africa. You you ask any other person that's really from Africa, they're gonna say they from Nigeria, they're gonna say they from uh from Ghana, they're gonna tell you exactly where they come from. Where do we come from? We don't have no uh, nationality, right? So our true nationality is an Israelite according to the Bible. You know what an Israelite is? So can I show you real quick, real brief? Go ahead, let me get it. Uh, clap it up, six. clap it up for the sis, man. Appreciate you, sis. Uh, give me a seven, uh, verse one, one and one first. Okay, give me a... Uh... All right, so look, this is the Israelite, go ahead. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1 and verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. So look, the story when we was in when Egypt, you know the story, let my people go, you know, with Moses and let me, and split in the Red Sea, you heard about that story? So look, that story was about a nation of people that was in captivity under the Egyptians. These nation of people were Israelites, to kind of sum everything up, they were Israelites, and they was freed out. So then Moses, he took them through the wilderness once they went through the Red Sea and he talked to the Most High for guidance. So the Most High says, look, I need some words for you to speak to those Israelites. Go ahead and get seven and six, go ahead. Book of Deuteronomy chapter seven and verse six. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. So Moses is telling the Israelites, he said, look, the Most High God, the ruler of the earth, the one who created the earth, the foundation of the earth, says he said that you are the chosen people. You are the holy people. And what does that mean? Go ahead. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So he says, and they're above all people upon the face of the earth. So believe it or not, God has favorites. The same way you got your favorite uh, clothes, your favorite shoes, the Most High has a favorite people, and you happen to be one of them. Go ahead and give me a, uh, give me Matthew chapter 15, 24. You can hold that one. You happen to be one of them. So now what does that mean? That means that all these people, you can hold that uh, revelation stand. Those people that was in the scriptures look just like you and I'm gonna show you too. Give me that revelations, go ahead. Revelations, uh, one, yeah. Revelations chapter one and verse 14. You know, it said as his hairs, the revelation of Yahweh saw in Christ. So now look, Revelations is the revealing of Jesus Christ. So it said they're going to reveal on how he looked. Go ahead. Verse 13. In the midst of in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one unto, unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his foot. So they said, look, they said in the midst of the seven, seven candlesticks, there was the Son of Man, which is Christ. They said, look, he had a garment that was all the way down to his foot. A garment. It was a long garment. Go ahead. And gird about the paps with a golden girdle. He had a belt on. Go ahead. His head and his hairs were white like wool. They said first and foremost, his head and his hairs were white, and it had a woolly texture. So now, when you look at the common picture of of Jesus Christ, what does he look like? He has stringy long hair, right? But in the Bible, it says that he had woolly hair. Now you tell me what people have woolly hair. Look, now the texture of your hair right there is woolly yourself. To have woolly texture hair is kind of like a sheet. We have that same texture. Go ahead. As white as snow, uh -huh. and his eyes were as a flame of fire, uh -huh. and, 
and his feet like it's a fine breath. Now it says, and then his feet. So I already talked about his hair. So his hair had wool texture, which is our hair texture type. And then also his feet was the color of brass. What is the color of brass? Brass, brass. brass. Is that brown? Huh? So it said, look, it says Christ and his feet was the color of brown. That's what that was the color, but what, what else? As if they burnt in a furnace. But then it was as if it was burnt in a furnace. So Jesus that Christ is not a white man? So Jesus Christ was not a so-called white man. All those pictures that you see of, of Jesus and, and all that stuff that they have in the church is contrary to what the Bible says. The Bible says he had woolly texture hair. So that means his hair was the same texture as ours. And also that his skin color was the color of brass, but not just brass as, it's, as if it was burnt. So he was dark, dark brown. He was a dark brother right there. So Christ himself looked just like you. And what else? Give me Matthew 15, 24, and I'll, I'll let you get some. Right? Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And then Christ's purpose, he didn't come for the whole world. He only came for the Israelites. Right there, it says it, written in red, like my brother said right here. It says, I am only sent unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So what the, what the church says, that he came for all people, that's not the case. Give me that Psalms. You got it? 148. So contrary to popular belief, Christ only came for us. Why? Because we needed salvation. We needed to be saved. We still need it now, right? We still in the press. You know how we always protest for freedom? We not gaining no type of freedom from America. We not gonna get any type of freedom or, 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 or any type of rights from America or from the so-called white men. It's because they don't care about you. Go ahead. Book of Psalms, chapter 147 and verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob, uh -huh. his statutes and judgments unto Israel. Uh -huh. He hath not dealt so with any nation. So it says he hath not dealt so with any nation. He's only dealing with the Israelites. So when, when someone says that God loves everybody, the Bible says contrary. The Bible says that he only came for you because you needed salvation. That's right. So does all this make sense? It makes sense? Okay. So now let's, let's recap a little bit because I don't want to go too far. So now July 4th. Why shouldn't we celebrate July 4th? So what? Because she said it's not for us. That's what's right. Oh, crazy. What color was what, what color was Christ? How did he look? Dark brown. So he wasn't a white man, right? And he didn't look like the, the long with the long string of hair. He didn't look like that, right? Okay. Now who did God who did Christ come to save? He came to save us. That's right. right. All praise be to the most high. So now if you got more time, I can show you how you can get salvation. Because look, he wants to save us, but we gotta be willing to want to be saved. See a lot of times we be out here, we we uh, we we uh praise God and we ask for forgiveness. Or we want to do right by God, but we uh, the way that we live is not right. So if you got a few more minutes, I can show you some more. Good? I'll give you like five more minutes. Five more minutes. All right. Give me that uh, Matthew chapter 19. Got it? Five more minutes. So now what we're going to is how do you get that salvation? We want to get to heaven, right? You want to go to heaven? That's what we say, right? Go ahead. The book of Matthew, chapter 19, and verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? So we want eternal life. We don't like people dying. We don't like people getting killed. We don't like loved ones leaving us and, and, and passing away. So look, this great man is asking Christ the same thing. He says, look, how do I get eternal life? That's what we're searching for. Go ahead. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. So Christ is acknowledging the Father. Christ and the Father is not one person, it's different. So you have Christ and you got the Heavenly Father. So he acknowledged him, go ahead. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. See, Christ told this, this great man, if you wanna get eternal life, then you have to keep the commandments. You have to keep the commandments. So now, there's a lot of commandments within the scriptures. You heard about the Ten Commandments? How well do you think you or all of us as a nation of people are keeping the uh, Ten Commandments? Not well at all. Not good, right? 
So how, how are we supposed to expect the Most High to come and, and, and save us if we're not even listening to Him? If you got somebody you love, you want them to listen to you, respect you, right? That's what the Creator wants from His children. You gotta respect you. You gotta respect the one who created you. Go ahead and give me our Exodus chapter twenty. Got it? Twenty. Uh, take a minute. So now look, I'm gonna start off with this one. So do you know what these are? No? All right. So these are fringes. It's a reason why we wearing these type of fringes. Why we wearing these is because God talks about it. That's one of the commandments that we have to keep. Go ahead. Numbers 15 to verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel. that they make them fringes in the borders of their gardens throughout their generation. So look, God says that we have we have a dress code. To sum it up, we have a dress code on how we're supposed to dress as well, how we're supposed to uphold ourselves. We're not supposed to be dressed in certain ways when you're a holy people. You know, when anything is in royalty, or when you have treasure, you're supposed to cover those things up, right? So we're going to cover that as well. But now what I'm covering is, is the fringes. The reason why we wear the fringes is because he says... That the Israelites must wear the fringes and do what else? Do what else? And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments uh -huh. throughout their generations. Uh -huh. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. So also, you're supposed to put a ribbon of blue across it. Why blue? Because blue represents royalty, right? So look, we put this on there because the Most High commanded us to. Go ahead. And this shall be upon you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. So this is just a reminder. So when I look down at these fridges, I understand who I am. I have a dress code. You know, like the Asians, they, the Asian woman, if you go into China or you go to different areas, they dress in certain ways because that's their culture. We have a dress code too. This is part of our culture. So now I'll jump to the next one real quick. Give me um, Exodus, Exodus uh, Sabbath. It's the book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse eight. Have you heard of the Sabbath day? So what? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit, okay. I'm gonna read it real quick, go ahead. Hold on, ask her what she knows. What do you know about the Sabbath? I can't tell you what I know off the top of my head. So what? I said I can't tell you off the top of my head. Do you know what day is the Sabbath? What day of the week? Just take a guess. Sunday? Sunday? Okay, so look. We're going to read it right now so you can get a little knowledge about what the Sabbath is. The Sabbath is on the seventh day of the week. When is the seventh day of the week? Sunday? All right, so look, we gonna, you can bring up your def, uh, dictionary. Just get a calendar. Who got a calendar? Oh, oh, pull up your calendar. You got your phone? Pull up your calendar and let me know the seventh day of the week, and then we're going to read the scripture. You got a calendar on your phone, Lot? She got what? All right. You got it. Saturday. Saturday. Hey. So look, the seventh day of the week <laughs> is Saturday. See, what they try to do, they try to change it to Sunday for some idolatry worship. It's because they was worshiping the sun, the sun, a sun god, which is a deity. That's not what the Bible says. We worship him on the day that he told us to, which is on the seventh day, right? It's a Sabbath day, but there's requirements. I'm going to read it real quick. Go ahead. Book of Exodus, chapter 20, and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So the Most High says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And also, this is one of the Ten Commandments as well that we uphold, that we want to uphold, right? Go ahead. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. So the Most High says, six days out of the week, you shall labor, which is going to work, you know, uh, getting all the money and the income that you need in order to provide. Go ahead. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. But it says on, says on the seventh day, that's the Sabbath, which is what? Saturday, go ahead. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant. So it says on the seventh day, it says there's no work. You don't go to work at all. <coughs> so you don't you don't go go to work to get your money or anything. It says on the seventh day, it's a day of rest. Go ahead. 
nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that, that is within thy gates. It says the whole earth is supposed to be at rest on the seventh day. It's supposed to be a rest day. Just so you can refuel yourself so you can get ready for the next week. Can I ask them out? Go ahead. Like, you know how the bank be closed on Sunday? It should be closed today. You know what I'm saying? You know how everything be closed on Sunday? It's supposed to be on Saturday. On the Sabbath day. Go ahead. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So look, the seventh day is holy. Now give me the judgment. Exodus 31, 15. So now look, the Sabbath day we're supposed to keep. So we're not supposed to work on that day. <clears throat> we're not supposed to even cook on that day. You have to prepare meals that are not cooked. Or prepare meals that doesn't require for cooking. You're not supposed to go to you're not supposed to go to work. You shouldn't be buying and selling. All these businesses should be shut down right now. Because it's, it's God's day. He says on, on, on the sixth day, that's when he finished his work. So on the seventh day, he took a rest. So the same thing he wants for his creatures. The Sabbath day. Now there is a judgment if you don't uphold that. I'm gonna get that real quick. Go ahead. Exodus chapter 31 and verse 15. Six days may work be done. Uh -huh. But in the seventh day, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Holy to the Lord. Uh -huh. Whosoever doth any work in the Sabbath day. So the Most High says, whosoever disobeys and say, no, I got to go to work. I got to get this bag. I got to work on Saturday too. Go ahead. What does he say? He shall surely be put to death. He said, look, the judgment was death. The judgment, that's what the Most High God was. He's serious about his commandments. He's going to apply judgment if we don't keep his commandments. And that's the only way we're going to get out of this state that we're in right now. The reason why this so-called black and Latino man, our, 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 our nation itself, is living in the ghettos, is, is dying by uh, diabetes and all these different types of disease that can't provide for their household as a broken household, is because we do not keep the laws of God. He cursed us, and that's why we're in this position. So those are a few laws that we ran over that we have to keep and uphold. So those are things that you want to start reading about, learning about. You're an Israelite according to the Bible, okay? That's your nationality. Now, I know you said you had to go. Now, unless you want to get you another one. I'll get you another one. No, all right. So, look, you're an Israelite. Take our uh, information. We have a YouTube page. And you need to, you, you should learn more. It, it's an honor to know about your nationality. It's an honor to know who you are, too. Believers so, are the way. All right, got it. Believers are the way. Believers are the way on YouTube. Uh, believers are the way. YouTube. Look, it's an honor to know who you are. It's a cursed condition to not know who you are. Give me Isaiah 1 and 3. What you got? You holding something? Right. Okay. Isaiah right. chapter 1, verse yeah, 3. Go ahead. Channel, man. Book Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. Appreciate you, sis. The ox knoweth his owner. Are you going way? The ass is master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. See, the Most High says, look, my people don't even consider. My people don't even consider anything that I have to tell them. They don't consider of knowing exactly their nationality. They don't want to know about any of that. So then what do they do? Now they lost. Celebrating the 4th of July. <laughs> Celebrating the, the white man's independence and being joyous about it. A day and morning. That's what it's supposed to be. You should happy be, as be fuck. happy. <laughs> <laughs> they popping fireworks. They getting their little uh, American flag balloons and all that stuff. Wearing the American color. But then a couple weeks ago, we're saying black power. <laughs> Our people are so hypocritical, man. Give me uh, Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 2. Ezekiel 12 and 2. Give me uh, Isaiah 65 and 2. She got the balloon. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 2. Give me the, you got the Ezekiel one? She got yeah, the right. balloons and all that. The book of Ezekiel chapter 12 and verse 2. Son of man, thou... Thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellious house. See, we dwelling in the midst of a rebellious house. A rebellious people. A rebellious people that don't want to adhere to what the Most High says. Go ahead. Which have eyes to see and see not. They have ears to hear and hear not. For they are, for they are a rebellious house. A rebellious people. That's why we being cursed. The Most High is cursing you right now. Go ahead. Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 2. I have spread out my hands all the day upon uh, unto a rebellious people. God hey, said, louder. Look. You said what? Say, speak louder, right? Okay. So look, God 
God says, I'm spreading my hands out to a rebellious people all day long. Trying to get our people to listen, trying to get our people to consider. But what do we do? We turn the ear, we roll the window up. We don't really fear God like we say we do. We don't really have faith like we say we do. We don't really love God like we say we do. Go ahead, read that again. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, uh -huh. which walk in a way that was not good uh -huh. after their own thoughts. Uh -huh. A people that provoked me to anger continually to my face. So the Most High says we provoking him to anger continually. So you think the Most High is going to save you and hear your prayers if you anger in him? You think he going to acknowledge your, your sorrows and your cries? And you're, and you're begging when you don't listen to the Father? You think that God is really going to run like that? You think you can fool God? That's what they're trying to do. What they used to say, they're trying to box with God. Go ahead. But okay, Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. See, that's the so-called black man right now. Oh, it's okay for me to celebrate our 4th of July. It's okay. It's a good thing. We're supposed to do that. It's a beautiful day. I'm a good American, right? See the most high, what does he say about that? Go ahead. That put darkness for light and light for darkness. We put darkness for light and light for darkness. We put light for darkness. That's why the Father is not going to listen and obey. Go ahead. Verse 11. But ye are they that forsake the Lord. That forget my holy mountain. See, we just forsaken the Most High, forgotten everything that He told us to do. We for, for, forsaken Him. That's why it ain't gonna be no type of uh, salvation coming for our people right now. And it's not gonna come until the Most High start turning the heat up. Go ahead. Now prepare a taste for that truth, and that furnish the drink offering to that number. Therefore will I number you with a sword, and ye shall all bow down. To the slaughter. Because when I called, ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear, but did evil before my eyes. See, the Most High says, Look, when He called out to you and tried to give you an opportunity of repentance, when He called out to you and, and brought out messengers to let you know that the way we live in is not right, and you decided not to hear, He said, Look, I'm going to bring you to the slaughter, and that's the judgment. And that's just the cold reality of things. People got to. People got it messed up and thinking that the Most High is going to be pleased with your doings. No, he's not. Go ahead. Look at Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 2. Uh -huh. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, yeah. which walketh in the way that was not good, right. after their own thoughts, uh -huh. a people that provoking me to anger continually to my face, uh -huh. that sacrifice in gardens, and burning incense upon alt altars and bricks, uh -huh. which remaineth among the graves. And large monuments, which eat swine's flesh, and brought the abominable things in their vessels. See, the Most High says, "Look, our temple is is, is abominable. It's, it's disgusted the way that we live in, the way that we act. We okay with the way that we live in. They expect God to be okay with that. You know what He says about the heart? He says it's deceitful and continually wicked, or desperately wicked. That's what it says about the heart. So don't let these other people say, "Oh, I just follow my heart." Like you follow what God says. You follow what the Father says. That's the only way we're going to get out of captivity. That's the only way our people are going to rise up. That's the only way you're going to receive salvation. You're not getting no salvation from America. You're not doing a good deed by celebrating America's independence. The America laughing in your face right now thinking that you, you, you good. You celebrating America's independence. You got the OGs with the flag. Come on, Ken, what's up? How you feeling? Look, you shouldn't be celebrating America's independence. That's not your independence. That's not where you come. Yeah, you you serve you served the white man's army, and what did he do to your people? He continued to oppress you, kill you, rape, rob, and, and murder, and took your whole nationality. But you served him, right? You're a slave, right? You're right. He liked being a slave. God Sorry, damn. you could be a slave. Damn, you could be a slave. That's why the Most High says, "I raise my hand to a rebellious people." A people that I gave the earth to, but what do they want to do? They want to repel against the Father. Repel against the Father. Give me a seven and seven. Oh, okay. I couldn't even hear it. 
Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. Man, I think that brings that, that brings like just anger within the spirit <laughs> when somebody just rejects the father like that. And be honored to serve the white man. <laughs> we be honored to serve the white man. Showing the badge. They, they be doing all that. You right. gotta, gotta die, man. Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7 and verse 7. Surely oppression maketh the wise man mad, uh -huh. and a gift destroyeth the heart. See, it says, surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. Surely oppression. But see, look, the OG wasn't even mad, though. He said, I'm cool with it. He said, look, I even signed up for the white man. I'll go kill and, and oppress other people for him. That's what we do. Give me Isaiah 29, uh, 13. Be okay with it. The most I said, surely oppression make a wise man mad and a gift destroys the heart. So the white man will give you, you know his gift on July 4th is? He'll give you some discounts at Ralph's. <laughs> so you can go and buy some food. he give you the holiday uh, discounts. That's our gift, that's all our people want. That's all our people need in order to be quiet. See, we, we rise up and be like, black lives matter, black, uh, black lives matter, our freedom, our justice. Justice or else. So the white man said, okay, I'll give you 50% off. Not even that, 20% off. He said, I'll give you, I'll give you a little discount at the store. You'll be all right. And our people go right back to it. Get in slumber to sleep. Go ahead, Isaiah 29. Read it. Okay, Isaiah, chapter 29 and verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as his people draw near me with their mouth and honor me with their lips. Like, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. Look, we removed our heart far from the Father. Far from the Father. That's why we're not going to have any salvation. We're not going to have anything. The Most High is not going to hear or honor your prayer. What's that scripture about uh, your prayers is abomination? Uh, Proverbs 28. 13? 13. Proverbs 28, verse 13. Let me get that. Proverbs 28, verse 13. It might be 13 or 9, one of them. Yeah, it's around there. Got it? Okay, come on, go ahead. Book of Proverbs, chapter 28, and verse 9. He that turneth away his ears from hearing my law, even his prayer shall be abomination. So look, the Most High says, He that turns his ear from the law, even his prayer is going to be an abomination. That's our, that's our prayers right now. Trying to ask the Most High for forgiveness. Trying to ask the Most High for the way out. He said, your prayers is an abomination. He said, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm not going to hear you out. And the people be so hypocritical. Uh, what was that, Mark 7? Uh, 7 and 7, verse 6. Mark 7, verse 7. Verse 6. Verse 6. He answered and said unto me. Speak up, huh? Well, have... Elias prophesied of you hypocr hypocrisies, hypocrites, as it is written, his people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Mosai says, look, you honor the Mosai with your lips. You say you love God. You say you give your life for God. You say you're going to obey the Father. But he said, look, your heart is far from him. Why? Because your actions is not it, though, right? Your actions is not it. And you can feel all how you feel, but judgment is going to come. Destruction is coming. Where are you going to sit at? You going to be on the left side or you going to be on the right side? So you got to learn how to obey the most high. You learn that through the laws. Go ahead. How be it? In vain do they worship me. Say, in vain they worship him. In vain they worship the most high. In vain we be worshiping the most high. We only do it when we in need of something. I pray to God I get this job. I pray to God I get this promotion. I pray to God I, I, I get out of this, uh, I get out of a uh, jail, whatever it might be. I'm trying to praise God. I see you say you out here, you doing it vain though. Go ahead. Teaching for doctors the, the commandments of men. You be doing the commandments of men right now. What's up, King? How you feeling? Go ahead. For laying aside the commandments of God, he hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups. Look, so don't uphold the traditions of men. Don't uphold these traditions. Don't go to your family house tomorrow <laughs> celebrating this independence of another nation that destroys you, <laughs> that kills you. 
that lynches you, that doesn't care anything about you. Don't do that. Learn about the Most High. Give me Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Please, yeah, I see you chapter 12, verse 13. How you doing? Hey. Good. About to go celebrate uh, July 4th. Yeah. Yeah, I'll talk to you. My bad. What's, uh, what's your name? My mom bought uh, uh huh. So you're going to put just some American flags up in there? Balloons? About to celebrate the independence? So, what, what is July 4th about? America, right? So July 4th, I just want to talk to our people. So look, July 4th, 1776, we shouldn't be a, a celebrating America's independence because America does not care about us. We're getting oppressed, we're getting killed, and America does not care about us. <laughs> I don't know how other ways to even say it. It's simple. It's so simple terms. Do not celebrate your oppressor's freedom. Do not celebrate your oppressor's independence while you're still in captivity. Do not celebrate that. So go ahead, give me that. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. See, look, the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. That's the whole duty of man is just to fear him and keep his commandments. Go ahead. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So fear God and keep his commandments because you're going to get judged for not keeping them. That's, and that's basically it, man. Ironically, you going to go up? 